Uh, one of the most telling statements about this entire event it was a quote, and I will quote uh, Mr. Justice uh, Peter Richard. He said, this is a story of incompetence, of mismanagement, of bureaucratic bum bungling, of deceit, of ruthlessness, of cover-up, of apathy, of expediency, and of cynical indifference, end of the quote. And you know, the more you study and look at the situation, you came to understand that he was so right in his assessment of what had gone on. So they started the mine in, um, in uh, September of uh, 1991. And uh, once the mine uh, opened, uh, I guess there were some pretty early warning signs of the problems that were about to uh, pers ultimately uh, be pursued because what happened was they had a few uh, roof falls. Uh, they had problems with, um, with uh, as I say, no emergency plan and, and, and the provincial authorities started to observe that this was happening. And, um, you know, at one point they even said they were going to pull the permit on the, on the mine and that would be the provincial authorities. But um, as it went on, the, the next thing that seemed to be a, a problem in the mind was the amount of uh, coal dust that was allowed to accumulate. And um, as one learns, coal dust is a very explosive uh, type of particle once it's been suspended. And especially when you combine it with a, almost like an ignition stage in methane gas. So if it lights, uh, you have this incredible potential for explosion. And uh, in, this, in this process, I think that uh, everyone came to the understanding that we were dealing in a very dangerous uh, commodity. And yet at the same time, and I heard rumors personally from people later that uh, in order to keep the mine going and to keep everything operating, that they were, uh, there were actually attempts at uh, taking uh, devices that were to stop vehicles from operating when methane gas got too uh, high in, in its concentration, that they were being modified so that they could carry on and, and, and work. And uh, that, to me, I don't know whether it was fact, but certainly was rumored from people I spoke with uh, during this process and you could understand because everyone was caught between uh, trying to be safe and go home at night and yet at the same time make a living and not be shut down or uh, find that uh, the mine itself would close. So um, a lot of conflicting uh, positions, uh, everyone cheering for them to go forward and yet at the same time, knowing that they were working really on a precipice, that if anything did go wrong, it would be serious consequences. And um, they, the provincial government even came along and, and at one point asked that they um, uh, get rid of this coal dust and um, they called it, um, have it stone dusted, which is taking another aggregate ground up and it, it somehow minimized the, uh, the amount of uh, coal dust that would be in the air. But then the mine was only open for eight months, you know, which is quite amazing. And then, of course, on May the 9th of uh, 1992, uh, the report is that a, a mining machine ignited methane gas, and the methane gas then combined with the coal dust and had this enor enormous explosion, with 26 miners being killed and uh, only 15 bodies ever being recovered. Uh, they finally just entombed the rest and left them there. And that yet the mine manager, right after the explosion, was making a statement publicly that this was as safe a mine as there is. Well, I, I think ultimately that was proven not to be so. In 1993, the RCMP did lay criminal charges of uh, uh, manslaughter and criminal negligence causing death and they charged um, both the company and uh, two mine managers, as I recall. And the trial on that 
Now we're we're now speaking in 1995, uh, so it was two years after that that the trial started, and uh, it wasn't very long before those charges were stayed, uh, because in fact there'd been uh, legal imperfections. In particular, there hadn't been proper disclosure uh, between the uh, defense and and Crown. So those charges were gone. So here we are in 1995 with no provincial charges having been successfully um, followed through because they were withdrawn. We have the criminal charges that are thrown out by the court. And now the only way we're going to find any, any, any hope of resolution and, and uh, I suppose responsibility being assessed is only through uh, Mr. Justice Richards' inquiry. Ninety-two, the explosion and its aftermath was significant. But one of his recommendations uh, of Mr. Peter Richard was uh, recommendation number 73, in which he, he really asked that the Government of Canada, uh, through the Department of Justice, institute a study on accountability uh, for corporate executives and uh, directors uh, for wrongful or negligent acts of a corporation and that we should introduce through the Parliament of Canada a process whereby we would modify uh, the criminal code or other, other statutes as necessary in order to uh, uh, make the workplace and the owners and operators of those workplaces m properly accountable for workplace safety. And uh, I, I think that was what really triggered, uh, I think, a great deal of, of the ultimate process in Parliament. 